Hey, what's up guys? It's Ramon from Modern. I hope you guys are having a great day. As always, please like, subscribe, and share the channel if you're enjoying the content. So about a year ago, I reviewed one of the first compact cameras that I bought. This was the Sony RX100 Mark III. There have been a number of different iterations of the RX100 line um, over the, like, the last several years. Last year of May 2020, Sony released a new compact camera called the Sony ZV-1. And it piqued my interest and uh, since it was so similar to the RX100 line, I decided to, to wrench it and review it in this video. So who is this camera for? Well, Sony has marketed the Sony ZV-1 as being primarily for bloggers and video creators. It even has a gigantic red button as kind of like the main feature that that signifies that it's going to be used for recording. If you look at the body of the Sony ZV-1, it strongly resembles the Sony RX line of cameras, only that it has a, its flip out screen flips out to the side rather than uh, up top or vertically. And it also has a, a space where you could mount a microphone on the top plate. At the time of recording this video, the Sony ZV-1 falls just under $750 US. Please check the, the links in the description for more accurate pricing information. There might be some specials that are going on from BNH Photo or from Amazon that you could take advantage of. Even though I think that this camera is on the expensive side, I have noticed that it's far cheaper than like a brand new Sony RX100 Mark 7. So what are some of the things that you would get in the Sony ZV-1? Well, for one, it has 4K recording up to 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second. The 4K has a slight crop, not not a not not a gigantic crop like you might notice in like a Canon EOS M50 or in uh, an EOS R, but it does slightly crop in a bit. In addition to the 4K recording, there are several slow frame rate options that you could use in the camera. You could slow the action up to 240 frames per second to 480 frames per second to 980 frames per second. You also have the ability to shoot log in the camera. S-Log2 and HLG are among several of the picture profiles that you could choose from when uh, you record video in this camera. This camera also has a one inch size 20 megapixel camera sensor similar to the RX100 line of cameras. The camera also features a 24 to 70 millimeter f1.8 to 2.8 lens. The camera also features a built-in microphone that is perfect for front-facing recording. This camera's swift flip out screen flips out to the side rather than vertically. This allows you to put a um, external microphone on the top plate so that makes it a little bit more similar to other vlogging cameras that are out in the market. Another bonus in this camera is a built-in ND filter which allows you to film on like really bright sunny days when you're outside. So now I'm going to touch on some of the things that I just did not quite like about the Sony ZV-1. For one, image stabilization still is kind of an issue. Um, at least when I tested this camera, image stabilization wasn't very sharp. And in-body image stabilization for video has always been kind of a, a weird issue when it comes to Sony cameras, at least from my, my opinion. It, always, it doesn't quite feel as sharp compared to other image stabilization I've seen in other cameras. I also didn't like how there were limited buttons on the, the body of the ZV-1. It just didn't feel very customizable in my opinion. For instance, if you're comparing this to the Sony RX100 series, you'll notice that the, the PASM dial is gone. It's been replaced by a mode button that you'll click instead. I think some people like the mode button. I kind of prefer, prefer having that 
that control that just makes it easier to slide the dial and select the right mode that you want to be in. I did notice that there's a new button where you could click it and it'll provide some bokeh, like automatic bokeh, like if you want to blur out the background, um, which I thought was interesting. Um, not sure if I'd use that too much, but it, it's nice. It's an interesting button to have that. I would have preferred some more buttons that you could have some more customization to. But yeah. So to wrap up my final thoughts regarding the ZV-1 is that if you're if you don't own a camera and you're looking for a vlogging camera, I think it will be perfect for you. If you already own like a Sony RX100, it makes sense to stick with the Sony RX100 if you're, it also makes sense to stick with the Sony RX100 if you're primarily using it to take photos instead of video. I think the Sony ZV-1 works if you're going to be primarily shooting video rather than taking photos. The ZV-1 still takes excellent photos. It's really just similar to the RX100. The only thing is that it's not as... I found it, I found it more difficult to take photos on the ZV-1 than the RX100 one. I personally am coming from the Sony RX100 Mark III and that camera is missing some of the nicer qualities that are in the ZV-1, such as 4K, such as, you know, the options to shoot in higher frame rates and slow action down. Also, I think the ZV-1 wins on a lot of the reco audio recording options. I think because the ZV-1 has a lot of the latest and greatest technology in it, it makes a great starter kit if you're creating online content that's primarily video focused. So I think if the form factor fits what you're trying to do, um, it's a lot beneficial to have a screen that flips out to the side if you want to mount it on a gimbal. So that wraps it up for this video review. I'd really like to know your opinions of the Sony ZV-1, especially since it compares so identical to the RX100 series. Do you think it's worth the upgrade and get rid of your older RX100 series or are you just going to keep on the RX100 series? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share the channel. Thank you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one.